That's it. That's all up to me. Well, there. Okay, Nate must be ready. Court of order. Only a dozen that little The city of Ellsworth Planning Board meeting for June 7, 2023. Uh, introductions. We don't have anybody to my right yet. John Marillo, chair. Rick Lyles, vice chair. Mike Hangy, alternate. Patrick Lyons, alternate. Staff. Uh, Matthew Williams, city planner. Lori Roberts, code enforcement. Thomas Gaming, fire inspector. Okay, item number two, adoption minutes from the May 3rd, 2023 regular meeting and the May 19th, 2023 special meeting. Uh, John, I think just quickly you should make a note that both Mike and Patrick are voting. Oh, yep, For right now, both right. of you are voting. <laughs> if one person comes in, you're still both voting. <laughs> if two come in, Mike, you're... I don't have to, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so what about the minutes? I like them. <laughs> do you like them enough to put it? <laughs> sure. Do you want to do them separately, or can we do them together? I can move them together. Do them together. Okay. Move that the meeting minutes of the May third and May nineteenth special meeting be adopted, accepted, and adopted. Is there a second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> I was in that other meeting, so I should probably abstain from voting to adopt. You could read them. <laughs> <laughs> the majority anyway, so. I mean, I can read them, but I can't attest to their validity. I think we've had people who've missed the previous meeting vote on it. He's playing, he's work, been working in Bar Harbor, so he's playing oh, the oh, role. Oh, 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 um, <laughs> um, do we need four to have a... It's a, four for a quorum. Four for a quorum, but doesn't have to be four votes. Yeah, it's, it's three, it's majority. the majority here, right? That does things like that stuff. I don't know if you can abstain from the vote and still have three people vote to accept it. I believe you can. I think you can. This is going to be a long night. I can just tell. Unless like Molly We haven't gotten past the minutes yet. <laughs> I mean, I can't vote on minutes of the meeting I did in town. Sure you could. I'm Might not, be inappropriate, but. I'm not going to. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. He's a lawyer. I know. I mean, the quorum just says there shall be a. So uh, no meeting of the board shall be held without a quorum consisting of at least four members authorized to vote. We have three in favor. One abstaining. Yep. Yeah. One. Just one. Motion passes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Item number three, preliminary plan review of a major use site plan entitled Ouellette Self Storage for Applicant Plymouth Engineering, Inc and owner RO Enterprises LLC. The proposal is to create a self-storage site with three storage buildings. The subject property is approximately 29.8 acre lot located Route 1A, Tax Map 112, Lot 7, and the Drinking Water and Resource Protection Zoning Districts. Uh, people representing the applicant. Good afternoon. My name is Keith Ewing from Plymouth Engineering. Keith? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm Adam Violet with Plymouth Engineering. Okay. Floor is yours. So this is an existing lot. Our client has purchased the property and would like to put three storage units on it, or three storage buildings on it. The C1 drawing shows the site layout will be off of U.S. Route 1A. Um, there's a wood, uh, there's a gravel berm between the road and the building, so the buildings won't be seen from the road. <coughs> In the TRT report, we had to add a fire tank Apparently I misinterpreted that and I made it a pond. Uh, so we'll switch that to a tank. What questions would you gentlemen have and lady? Uh, the, I mean, is there a fire pond or Tom? There's nothing no, out there no right pond. now. Okay. So it sounded like there was a pond on, yeah. on site. Fire, by, code, there, by the code, fire code, ponds are not allowed any longer. It has to be an underground system. 
Hmm? We talked about it. He's going to switch it back over to a, a tank for the final. Okay. You'll show that on the plan so it's accessible. You'll show that on your final plan so it's accessible to fire trucks and stuff like that? Yes. Okay. Right now it's right beside the gravel driveway that's there already. And that'll be, that'll be a 5,000 gallon cistern? Yes. Correct. That's good with you guys. The reason the pond's bigger is so that if it froze, you would still have access to the water underneath. I guess I got a question for, for Mike or Tom. Uh, the difference between a cistern and a, a pond, uh, I mean, is, this, is a cistern required because there's structures? I mean, we had a fairly recent small uh, three, four lot subdivision that the fire chief approved a fire pond. Is that right? Yeah. No, what it, what that was, it was an existing fire pond on Wincombe Ball. Already. Happy Town. On Happy Town, yeah, sorry. Okay. Out on Happy Town that we utilize to uh, to make an agreement with the lot owner so that way we could pass that minor subdivision um, at that point. That was already an existing pond already there. Okay. Uh, similar to this here out on um, Higgins Elbow, we did the same similar thing for the storage unit. We made, required them to put a 5,000 gallon um, cistern in. So we had some sort of uh, water out there because the way the hydrant sits, it's, it's across the road on Bucksport. So it was, that was not a feasibility to sit there and drop a line from and shut that road down. So we made them drop. And the same thing for this on Bangor Road, there's no water out there. So we were, we were asking them to put a 5,000 gallon cistern in so we have something there yeah. to be able to fight a fire if there in the event is one. Other question, Linda? Yours on the TRT is <clears throat> required to be paid in the Chapter 4, Article 3.14. So now the, drawing, okay. the drawings were paved, it's just the hatch wasn't correct. So, and they have modified the drawings now so that the hatch is the same. Okay. Well, I, I, my question was more to the fire department because, I mean, there's a storage facility out on the Bucksport Road that was approved fairly recently that's not paid. Speaking to. Well, you're talking about the Higgins? No, the, um, just down the road from DCP. So it used to be WHCA. Uh, I think it was Bernie Gordon's storage buildings. Mm. On oh. the Bucksport Road. On the Bucksport Road. Yes, I am not, I'm way, that was before me. That was when Mike was sure still the inspector. I'm not sure why we allowed it that way. I can't remember. I can't speak to that one. I'm sorry. I think they asked for. I, didn't they ask for a waiver for that? Because it's because it's not really. I don't. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'll look into it. I'm seventy. I'll get you an answer. I think, I think we should be consistent. Well, I can say the ones that we have that that have come forth when I went from me being here mm -hmm. have all been required to pay. We haven't. We haven't waived any of those. You guys are, I mean, familiar with where their lot is. It's just a little bit past Cove Way on the left. I think maybe four driveways past Cove Way, I believe. Um, yeah. And you said for the most part, uh, it's going to be shielded from the road. I know there's a fairly high berm there. There's a picture yeah. in the uh, appendix D. Yeah. Yep. It's in the back, I believe, of Appendix D. Yep, nice to be. We're not intending to change that berm or the vegetation that's in front of it at this time, other than making the driveway more prevalent. So you're counting on that vegetation being the screening? It is the screening. It is the screening. Okay, because we have a, a note from 
code that you might need more than just rocks for screening? We added additional trees in between the rocks that are actually along the access driveway. Yeah, that comment was meant for the, the access driveway, driveway, not off the driveway. The yeah. Gotcha. So you are aware of, um, in the building code 903-2 concerning firewalls, if you're over a certain amount of square footage? Yes, I am already had this conversation up the road at the previous town, so, okay. But there's also a fire separation detail on the civil plans, just for yep. your information at this point. As mm -hmm. soon as we have building yep. drawings, we'll get those updated. Just as a point of convenience, I guess, um, because this will be coming back, right? Yeah, because it's preliminary. Um, just to show the outline of the buildings or whatever on a couple of these drawings, it's, it's kind of like, here's a drawing of the area, and it's not at all clear with a... C1? I don't remember which what the ones are, but these are... Yeah, on some of these, they're fine. I mean, like, that is obviously good. But I'm just saying that on some of the other drawings, for, for our reference and reviewing it, it would be good if the, the actual buildings were shown. And, and yeah, it doesn't have to be great detail. Okay. Um, now, this is right before the passing relief lane that goes when you're going towards Bangor, is that right? Or just it's the during that lane? passing lead. I'm sorry? It's during that passing Oh, it's during it? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I thought it was just before, so never mind. Um, on on the, the one drawing, which is C3, which I think shows the turning radius for the fire truck and all that. Yep. Um, does that... They can't stay in the lane, in the one lane, and make that turn. They have to go to the, uh, the middle lane. Is that right? You're talking out at the road? Yes. Yeah. I think. See that. We used the ladder truck for the template. Right, no, I get that. But the question is, and does the ladder truck go out into the other lane, or can it make that turn? Well, first of all, you know, I guess I'm not too concerned with the turn, because that's the Torrid Ellsworth turn, and I'm pretty sure the ladder truck will come the other way. Uh, well, that's kind of, <laughs> what I was wondering, too, was, you know, why does it show the entrance and exit from the north? I think one of the things is probably because this is the kind of an acute it's not a, a right angle per se, and that's where it's going to be harder to make the turn. That's Correct. I see that. Yeah. Great minds think alike. But the still question still comes. Um, what did the What did the state say about a decelerate? I'm sorry. They were very happy with that location because people will be able to move over into the third lane to get around anybody making the turn. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think I would share that, but that's okay. Um, I guess the question that I have is, um, did they say anything about a diesel lane or anything like that for people, for, not for trucks, but for cars that were coming uh, towards? Yep. Okay, so they're, they're good. Yep. Okay. Their road. Uh, in terms of the proposed sign? That we're still working on. The client hasn't created one yet, so we're in the process of helping him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like we'll have that for the, the final. Um, I guess my question is the visibility of the sign. It's just going to be... I mean, it, lo it, it looks like it would be behind some brush and whatever from this map and not visible from the road almost. It's pretty close to not being visible, but... Is there some way we can make it more visible? Because, again, you know, if it's a low-speed road or whatever, that's no big deal, right? But this is... Uh, traffic's moving at least at 55, right? And through here, it's probably more like 70, but that's all right. Um, so my, but my question is, sometimes driveways are hard to find along the way, and so if that sign can be, you know, jacked Elevated. up a little bit or whatever, so that it's actually visible for the for the 
so you know, for anybody who wants to use the facility. So now you can argue that they'll know where it is, but that seems like a shallow argument to me. Well, by the same token, they have to be careful that it's not blocking a view. Oh, right. The road but, people leave. Yeah, well, that's it's way back there. That's not, uh, unless they move it, right? We're um, limited on that 50 foot offset. So. Is this the one where you. Yes. You, um, you you spelled ladder as in ladder truck incorrectly. It would be, it's obviously a minor thing, but it would be nice to have it spelled correctly on, a, on official maps that we're signing just, just for the hell of it, right? There is no fence on the entrance road, correct, until you get inside to where you start going into the storage. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah, where the Knox box location right. thing is. So truck control off. That's what we have. We had an issue with one before. Where it's really yeah, I would think so that's far. I mean, far enough. Yeah. You said minimal clearing is required. This site was used during the construction of Route One A. It's a giant gravel pile that we're building on. Yeah. So there isn't much growing on it at this point. Okay. And we've attempted to maintain that the buildings fall on the gravel pad that's there. Okay. Cool. If I'm not mistaken, the people that owned it previously, the applicant, I think did some clearing in there within the last couple there, of years. If you look at the Google Maps pictures, which are included in there, there is a couple of driveway-like areas that have turned back into the equivalent to grass. Um, he had I would have told you he was creating a campground, but didn't know he needed permitting, but. <laughs> Darn code. <laughs> and we'll come back to you guys before we develop anything beyond the initial three storage buildings. So the picture with the truck in it? Yes. That, that's actually, that, where the truck is, is actually before the site, right? That's the driveway into oh, that, the site. Oh that, oh, that is the driveway, okay. We're making it slightly wider than it currently is. So okay. That, so right now the sign would be behind a big rock. It's very likely to be behind the big rock because I have to stay 50 feet off of the highway. And five feet back from the property. Yeah, it's, that's the 50. I'm not sure they have much to say about that. Yeah. 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 It's going to be over here. It'll be five feet. So it's the right of way. For okay. Uh, you, were you utilizing a secure, any type of security? Cameras. Cameras. And type where they have to punch a code in to get into the lot or just... I believe not that it's required. He's issuing cards, I believe. But I don't think he's gotten that far. Okay. Any other questions? Any issues from staff? Um, just, just during the TRT process, uh, there had been some discussion that you have to check with DOT regarding the driveway. There may have been a permit application already completed. Is there an update on that? It's you in the appendix that we do have. <laughs> Those are approved, though. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and then most of the other issues, um, there are small changes to the plan. I guess a lighting plan for final. Yes, that's um, in the process. Yep. Yeah. And um, that's it. Otherwise, I don't recall. Uh, Do we have the permit from DOT in the packet, or uh, the, I think the permit that they sent to the application with is in the perm, uh is in the packet, packet. and then we got confirmation that was approved. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's in Appendix D. Okay. <coughs> the letter that went to them or from them? No, the actual signed permit with okay. what right. they had specified, and we've made the adjustments to what they've shown on these prints to show that. That was in Appendix D. Yep. Any other issues from staff? No. And it looks according to your checklist that they pretty much have completed the information that that's required at this point. Public hearing. <laughs> Nelson's not here to make it. 
keep me on track. <laughs> Public hearing for if there's anybody here would like to address this development. Opposed to public hearing? Ask Nate if there's anyone on Zoom. I don't think there is. But that's okay. Is there anybody on Zoom? Uh, who's Nate? Nate's. Anybody on Zoom, Nate? Uh, nobody is asking the question, Rich. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Do I have a motion? Sure. The make a motion that the preliminary plan review of a major U site plan title. Now, I'm not going to say it correctly. Oh, oh, that. That. Uh, self standard for applicant Plymouth Engineering and owner RO Enterprises uh, be accepted as being complete at this point. Second. All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. You're in the St. John Valley, dude. What's that? You're in the St. John Valley, dude. Yeah. Lot, lots of things that I can't pronounce that other people can. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing the sink. Matt, thank you. Thank you very much. Next up on the agenda, item number four, preliminary plan review of a major use site plan and major subdivision plan entitled WL Properties LLC. The applicant owner WL Properties LLC. The proposal is to create a multifamily development with a total of 116 units. The subject property is approximately 121.8 acre parcel located at the end of Eastwood Lane, tax map 22, lot 13, in the commercial, limited residential, and resource protection zone districts. Sorry, yeah. Printed out large. So, I thought the, oh, the, the I thought this was the public coming in with <laughs> visual aids, and I was going to be really excited. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll help you position it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me take one. I think we can do it right about there. That's all right for you guys. Yeah. It's good. It's a little crooked, but it's okay. As long as they can see it. Okay. Well, you just have to look at it like this. <laughs> Good. Could you introduce yourself? Yes, um, Shelly Lazat from Artifacts, a civil engineer, and this is Scott Pelletier at WL Properties. Um, this project is um, a residential development, uh, 116 units in 21 buildings on the lot. <clears throat> Tax map 22, lot 13. The entire property is about 122 acres, and it is off of Eastwood Lane. Um, as, as you had said, uh, that is also Eastwood Lane is off of Route 1A, just no, beyond. No, no. I noticed in several places in your application that's Route 1, not 1A. Where it says Route 1 rather than 1A? Yes, your, your property comes out on Route 1. Not okay, Route 1. Okay. Not Route 1A. It, okay. It's mentioned several times in the whole application, <laughs> so you might want to. I always get it confused. <laughs> okay. Okay. Many do. Okay. okay, so I make sure that changes. <clears throat> um, so uh, we came to the board about a year ago on sketch plan. I'm not sure if who was here at that time, um, but you may have been familiar with it. Uh, originally, we had a, a little bit larger of a development that expanded out into the back part of the, the lot, but um, kind of condensed it more to the front to make things, you know, lesser of an impact at this point. Um, so uh, we did a TRT meeting uh, a week and a half ago and uh, made our changes to the questions that they had and we submitted a package for you to review and um, ready to answer any questions that you might have. Oh, I'll start off on uh, page three, look, uh, under 606.7, existing site conditions. And at the bottom, you mentioned sewer and water will be served by respect, respective public utilities 
access from existing private means in Eastwood Lane. Early discussions with the likely owners of the private means have, have proved unsuccessful, and we anticipate needing further assistance and coordination with the city utilities in order to move forward with connections. Can you kind of explain? <coughs> Well, um, originally when I had first spoken to um, the person from the water department, uh, those lines were put in by the private owner of, um, I believe it's the eye care place. Um, so connecting into those, tennis court. the tennis court, yeah, yeah, yeah right, the tennis yeah. center. Um, and there was some discussion about having to contact them to find out about connecting into those that main uh, in extending it because they are the ones that invested the money to install it so it's a private line until you get out to route one does the water line go all the way to the bowling alley or are they on are they on a well i don't know if they're on a well i doubt it they probably are connected to city water I mean, if they're connected to city water they were here long before the tennis center. That's probably true. Um, you know, I, I know the tennis center has been there a while, and then they added on to it. Um, the sets of plans that we have shows the water line there, so I'm not really sure the exact date when that was done, and or if it was updated at some point in that interim. Do we know where Reggie stands on that, or what? I mean, what? Um, I wasn't aware that this was a specific issue. Um, I know there was discussion about whether or not the line itself would be public or private running from their prop, like into their property. But the line previously, um, I hadn't discussed that with Reggie, if whether that was city owned or not. His, and during TRT, it appeared that he thought it was city owned, but I guess it's not. Well, uh, you know, my. My information is from about a year ago, so it was something that was brought up at the prior TRT meeting with the sketch plan. So if if that information wasn't correct, then I'm, I don't, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I have sent a letter to him, um, and... Um, Sorry, to the water and superintendent? Or? Yeah, to, to Reggie and to Michael Harris um, about the water and the sewer. Um, so at the point when we start doing discussions on connections there, um, I'm sure the, the answers to those questions will come up. I mean, if, if, it, if it comes to it and that is a private line and, and they can't connect into it, then, then the, the alternative is to add a line all the way to the main in, in Route 1, but I mean, that seems kind of, you know, redundant. Uh, I assume, I mean, your property has a right of way over. It does. Eastward Lane. Mm -hmm. for me the um, how the, the arrangements of these living units how they are arranged within the buildings themselves yes um, there are because you've got four and six and yes. looks like three or two or something like that but so they, they on the plan they are shown as what you can see is like three blocks or two blocks um, next to each other um, set back about four feet each one of those blocks is two units, and uh, they are upstairs, downstairs, so townhouse style. Okay. Um, they will have two separate doors, I believe, on the exit from, from, from the front. Each, built, each one has a front each, and back door. Each one has a front and back door, its yeah. own, um, <clears throat> but served from that one like okay. slab. And um, at the end of each one, there is a laundry and utilities room. Okay. So... And so every apart, every building is designed that way, correct? 
So you'd have none that where you have an apartment above? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So uh, looking at the TRT report, one of the things that it's talking, one of the things that it said here was we talked about firewalls and it says check and we'll make sure that they are high challenge firewalls for the preliminary. This being the preliminary, I find no design of a high challenge firewall in here. Yes, I, I had discussion about that with, um, well, I'm not sure if, I, I didn't go over that with Lori, but um, with our our architect that's in, that's um, does code reviews all the time and his his understanding was it's a two hour wall uh, Absolutely not. No? No, ma'am. The definition of a high challenge firewall, um, as you, I understood it, had something to do with um, the danger of whatever was in the buildings. Correct. And, if you, if, and I'll give you, I'll give you a reference you can take a look at in the International Building Code, the IBC, section 706.1, 1. 1, 1.1, and 0.2. Okay, it specifically dis explains what a high challenge firewall is. And basically what it is, it's a wall designed and built so that if you have fire in one section and there's a collapse, that wall stays standing. So it's a self-standing, self basically um, structural in and of itself so that nothing can pass through it. It's not supposed to have any ductwork in it, not supposed to have any plumbing in it. The other thing you might want to reference is NFPA 211 by standard by statute that is part of the building code and it actually ref uh, the building building code actually references NFPA 211 um, or excuse me 221 um, as to what a high challenge firewall is. So in between each two units of how you have them separated there needs to be a high challenge firewall between those units. It's a very expensive wall to build and an expensive wall to maintain. Um, so it looks like you're gonna have several of those and you need to have a design that's engineered by an engineer and approved by the fire department before you, before you can even start with that. So it's okay. something that's very, very crucial to this kind of a design. Um, and. Um, you know, the challenge, high challenge firewall is an appropriate way to separate these buildings and, and that's basically what it does is it separates it from one or two family dwellings from apartments, which you want to get away from. Um, the only other alternative you have is a 13R sprinkler system in every building. So that's something you may want to take a look at and weigh the differences as to whether you go with a high challenge firewall where you can't put any plumbing in it or any duct work or anything like that versus sprinkling the building with a 13R system. Okay. okay. I know Scott has built a, a lot of these, um, yeah. so I'm not sure if that's just something I wasn't familiar with that you're already doing. I, I believe we are, but yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so that would be the, that would be applicable for each three unit building. Each unit that has three or more units right. in it. Right. right. Okay. But right. I mean, because we only have two units or three units. Yeah. This on, but along those same lines, uh, on some of these three unit clusters or whatever you want to call it, um, there is the, this little skinny thing. Is that the laundry room yes. you're talking about? Yeah. Does that count at all? Uh, uh, well, there'd be a, there'd be, they can have a one hour wall between that and, and the living space. Okay. But, all right. But here, for, for, we're just going to look at this map here. Um, so it would have to go here, right. or could it go there? It'd have to go both places. Because, Why you both? Get, because you have two units here. Yeah. Between every two units, yeah. you have to have the fancy wall. wall. Okay. So this one would have one, this one would have two. This one oh, have so one, even, this for, one. even the two building things have right. to have it. Yep. So they all have that. Yeah. So if it's three or more units, they have to have that high challenge firewall. Between the one and two. Okay. Or two and three, excuse me. Yes. The ones that look like they're two, uh, there those are actually four units because there's two in each one of those blocks. Yeah, see this one here. Okay. See this one Hence has the four units. Yeah. Right. I see, thought this that has might be four weird. units yeah. in it. Gotcha. Okay. 
This one has six. Okay, sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. Stupid okay. me. Sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so you get a lot of firewalls is the point <laughs> to take care of. Yeah. Okay. Now, did you say on each one of those units, <clears throat> there's going to be two apartments in each unit? Are both of those? Because they're double units. Downstairs and upstairs, or is one okay, so tenant upstairs and one tenant downstairs? They're, they're all townhouses. So yeah. well, each, each, each unit has an up, upstairs and down. Downstairs, okay. Yeah. How many bedroom units are we? Two. 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 Yeah. Every one of them is two. Yeah. And I guess the reason why I bring it up to you in the preliminary here is because depending on what it's going to cost you to build those walls and establish them, the offset cost between that and a sprinkler may be almost the same price, or maybe less, but the demographics of the whole project changes because now you have to allow for space for sprinkler valving and underground piping for fire protection, water supply, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's something that, you know, I, I needed to bring it up so that you understood. Are there sidewalks within the development? Um, we had that discussion at the TRT. Um, I had not shown them on here. I had a widened, a widened shoulder. So the, the road was actually um, 24 feet wide with the shoulders on both sides, um, which is more than what the requirement uh, for this particular road is. Uh, but we talked about the opportunity to, to try and fit it in to that small right away because we are kind of limited in the right away there. Um, and, and I haven't gone beyond what we had. Is just not enough time to do any more redesign in between the TRT and, and now. So um, it's something I will have to look at before the final, for sure. I did show a, a walkway, a gravel walkway going down towards um, Resort Way, mm -hmm. which is probably a good place to send people if the Resort Way would extend their drive with a walkway because that's easier to get to Walgreens and the shopping center there than it would be to walk on Route 1 um, down to that corner. The medical center is down that way that, as well. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah, just if because I also see you built a you know the the area of a bus stop for any children living there, and yeah. just thinking about children walking from whatever unit they're living in to the bus stop, it seems like sidewalks would be a, yeah, a good safety measure. There are, um, and I'm not sure you probably can't see it at this scale because it it was just too hard to get them all in on one plan. But I will blow them up at some point. Uh, there there are wider gravel shoulders along each one of the accesses to the buildings. And then on the main drive, there's also, they're like four feet wide. I've widened them on one side. So, you know, you wouldn't have to walk in the pavement, on the pavement. Um, I'm sorry, you said they're gravel though? They are, the shoulders. That wouldn't work so well for ADA compliance, right? That, that is true. So I would suggest that you might want to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Was there not has been any discussion with I mean, for whatever you, they do for sidewalks within the development, extending the sidewalk down Brookside Way to Eastwood Lane down to Route One? So when the we talked about sidewalks it did come up, but where the conversation ended was um, the original plan during TRT there wasn't a width of the part of Eastwood Lane outside of their development and so we weren't we didn't know how much space there was if they have to make it wide enough for emergency access. Um, if there would be room for sidewalks, um, so now that we have it, it'll have to be a conversation that we have going forward, but we didn't finish that conversation. Well, what's the width of Eastward Lane? It looks like now it's labeled as 25.6. It prior. widens out down at the, at the intersection, like a 29 Do we have any feet. idea what the right of way is for the whole, for the whole road? Is it 50 foot? Probably or 50 feet. Uh, yeah, it's probably about 50 feet. What's that? About 50 feet. What's the requirement of the ordinance for sidewalks? If there is any? Uh, there's a requirement for sidewalks within the development, but they're kind of quiet on if you have to go into someone else's property to continue them out to like a state road or something. And do you all have control over the, was it East Way, Eastwood Way Eastwood at the, Lane. yeah, Lane. right, that one, yeah. the Eastwood whatever. Um, you know, it comes. To, I understand that you know, you, Route One is the state road, obviously. Um, but um, do you have any control over how wide you can you can make the 
Eastwood Road at the intersection if you know or what for example if you wanted to have it flare out so you could have a left turn and a right turn lane and in and an in lane is there space to do that and if there's not space do you have control over that roadway so that you could make it wider or how would we accommodate that that would require private conversations between the landowner who owns that section of Eastward Lane and the developer okay so so you don't have any agreement currently with them no okay I, I believe Scott has had some discussion in the past but I don't even um, know if that guy owns it anymore but yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while so okay. it's definitely needs to be revisited depends on the language in the easement as well <clears throat> if it's a broad right. broadly drafted easement and allows for improvements for all purposes of a way I would argue that allows for the construction of sidewalks so you might want to look into what what you have to do to that make that happen or if you can make it happen and especially at the intersection uh, I mean from my perspective on this point uh, so that you could possibly allow for a right turn lane and a left turn lane coming out but the turnarounds they seem non typical to me is that correct or are you happy with all the little turnarounds at the end of all these little streets and roads the issue I had with it was is that I couldn't get the accurate scale because uh, all we had was digital copies. Uh, our printer upstairs is broke. So I wasn't able to do, like, actually measure out to get, say yes or no, like they meet the requirements or not. So. Okay. So that has to be resolved. I mean, yeah. you know, normally you'd have, like, a cool cul-de-sac or the hammerhead thing or whatever. Right. And here you seem to have a, a space, you know, for the turnaround because it's at the end of the at the end of the little road. But it's not clear to me that that, that meets your standards. So, right. You, and but but that's on your list of things to do, right? As soon as our uh, printer gets fixed or I get a hard copy, then okay. we will be okay. We um, just I was reading it through the the codes and the ordinance um, the. The definition of streets, we're not quite sure. Like, I mean, if if each one of those driveways for the parking or parking lots are considered a street, then if you, know, you if you have more than two leading into a into that area, the assessor considers them to be streets. More than two. I'm sorry. So if you have more than two, more than two like well, developments or houses, they can, the assessor is going to sit there and say that this is a street. So would that be considered dead end though? Because it said it if it's over 150 feet. Right. So if it's over 150 feet, it's considered a dead end. Okay. okay. So and that's where I couldn't measure out. What happened? Yeah. To the fire truck? Because the question is what happened I, to the fire truck? our printer upstairs is broke and. Right. I only this have it on digital. Family. I can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can. So, I, I. My intention was yeah, to put the put a turning uh, template on it and show the here. forty foot truck being able to mm -hmm. turn around. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to clarify, you know, which ones of those needed to have that, and um, you know, if we need to name each one of those little those little you're entrances have, as streets. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to name them because if we come up in for EMS, we need it all. Okay, what? Which lane essentially there there it is? Which building is it? You know, building four, apartment A, mm -hmm. that that kind of stuff. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna need all that. I had some brief discussion with the assessor, but didn't get very far. And if you've noticed, we did have a name suggested, but that is already in use. So um, Scott has a, a list of other names that I will send over to him, and we can talk about that. And yeah, the 911 addressing, if you've got two or more units on that, it becomes a street. Each one has its own address. So okay. in order to have yep. its own address, it has to have a name to go yep. with that street. So. Um, so you've got more than two units on this particular, regardless of whether it's a parking lot or whatever it still is a street yeah. per se okay just don't use lord of the ring uh, <laughs> well you can come up with a theme right? i think use, use, <laughs> use, use names that, that are common well, i always like the colorado kind of themes where you like sierra and, <laughs> when you have so many that are already named it's hard to come up with something that's unique and different yeah. Yeah. come up with a theme Yep. For that name as a theme, like flowers <laughs> or, or I think heavy metal yeah. groups would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Music groups or yeah. something like that. Talking ACDC, let's up on cool. What's that? I thought you were talking about like heavy metals, like on the periodic table. That's true. <laughs> that, that, that would be an option. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone like that. Palladium. Oh, 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 yeah. Lithium. Now you're really getting into it. <laughs> okay. Is is there a 
And this is really to you. There's a, is there a homeless encampment out here someplace? Oh, they're all over the place. No, well, no, wrong, yeah. wrong location. Wrong location? Yeah. That's good. good. Okay. Are there any... Because my next question is, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> are, are there any, um, like, uh, kind of communal or green spaces or anything as part of this design? Not, like, specific to, like, a park or anything like that. Um, you know, just the little mail building, which is for bus stop. But, um, no, nothing identified at this point. There's, there are spaces where, you know, that can be used, um, it can be used as that. We tried to do as, as little as possible of clearing. I know it's a big area when you look at the whole overall thing in order to get everything to fit in there and construct it without, you know, clearing everything. It's uh, mostly wooded. Yeah, mostly wooded. Tried to retain most of what was there and some little pockets of wooded, wooded areas within that too. When you talk about the, the mail building and the and the school bus pickup, have, has anybody actually checked with the school department to see if they would come up here with a school bus, or if the post office would come up a private road to make delivery? As far as I know, they don't come up private roads. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was a question at the mm -hmm. at the uh, TRT meeting, and if if it's not possible, we just showed the opportunity for that to be there. If that's if that was something that could happen, as far as the mail goes, I haven't um, checked with, at, you know, the post office, but I know most of these kind of developments require a mail station. Now they, they don't come in and do individual deliveries to the to the units. Yeah, they'll do that. They'll drive up a private. I live on a private road. And we have well, it, which seems so like sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Yeah, game box with everyone's mails. Oh, box. right, right, right. right. So it, it's not that far up, but it'll come up. And so what happens with, and these are multi-bedroom houses, right? They're not Two. all, I mean, they're going to have kids. Two so. bedrooms. So uh, how are we going to deal with the school kids again? Well, well, maybe close to where it meets down East Highway on their property, they could put a bus stop of sorts I don't know well the the whole Eastwood Lane is not is a right away so I mean I wouldn't want to see the kids down down on route the route one maybe you know maybe they we could work something out with the school yeah. right. for the yeah. the um, the bowling alley road you know I just you know it would not be a safe place for kids to have to wait yeah I, I think from for me the importance of figuring out with precision where the bus how the bus would get in there how it will be able to turn around and that there's safe walking for children all the way up to that spot and ideally you have sidewalks going you know connecting as far as possible um, so, yeah. I mean generally the school buses don't go up private roads but I then considering how many units are here, I think it'd be worth having a conversation with the school department to say, you know, show them this and say, you know, would you envision coming up here? And if they did, I think you'd have to have a little better, there's really not much of a turnaround there for the school bus where you have, yeah. where you show it. But I, mean, I think it'd be worth having that conversation instead of having however many kids you know, walk all the way down. Trooping all the way down. To route one. Because some of those walks are, I mean, it's a long way, really yeah. And, far for and there may be a better place. place for that to yeah. be, you know. And maybe they're maybe they're willing to, to make a deal, you know, not to go down every little street to the very mm -hmm. end and turn around and come out, but you know, at where it spurs off, stop there. Or yeah, something. I mean, there could be a nice spot in the middle. So there's like right, three yeah, or four middle. stops within this within <clears throat> division. Yep. Yeah. Does the city own the school department? Uh, control the busing, or do they have contract yeah. with someone else? The, the school owns the buses. Oh. Inclement weather, too. Parents are going to want to drive their children. They're not going to want to make them walk when it's so cold or if it's Good raining. You know. So you might want to have some area there so people could pull around, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking out loud. But getting back to Eastwood Lane, uh, what do you envision uh, right now it's being plowed or taken care of by Eastwood Lane, the tennis court? Uh, what do you envision? I mean, you had, have you had those conversations with the owners to say it doesn't, work out, it doesn't work out, we're going to do it ourselves. Yeah, it's, we're going to maintain the road as if we, we it's our own and 
and it, it, I always assume I'm going to anyways. And if if something else works out better, that's going to it'll be it'll be fine. But now, what about? I mean, I haven't been on that we're, road. We're going to have to pile the whole development anyway. So yeah. yeah. Well, what about like maintenance of the road, paving? You know, going forward. I always assume I'm responsible if until some, unless they make an agreement with someone else. They're they're you know, I can't assume they're going to offer, and if they don't, then I'm going to take care of it. There's not a there's no so, way I can force them to. Right. Where do where do words that that make that binding forever? Does that do, do those show up on the plan here somewhere? Well, I would encourage to try and have those conversations first, and then you'd have an agreement. Yes. With the yeah. If that doesn't happen, we'll have to yeah. take you up on your offer and put it on the plan. Okay. Yeah. Some kind of a maintenance maintenance. Right. right exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's so and similar, okay. sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, Go similar to the sidewalk issue, you know, depending on the language and the, the deed on any easement, um, you know, it may cover access and maintenance of. So you have you'd able to get access to the property that would include plowing. So, um, you know, at the very least, having the right to do so, clarifying that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't really understand. Sorry. Was it in addition to what you No, I would just say it's it's along the same lines. Um, if you can have the conversation and have an actual an agreement um, and that you could provide to us so we have that. Um, but if short of that, um, the language of whatever easement you have over, you know, right of access over those alternative routes, um, oftentimes, depending on the language, it clarifies whether or not you know, you can basically, you can, if you need to get there, you can get there, and thus you have the right to plow, but right. um, it'd be better to, so if, if you can't get an agreement, then we'll want some kind of, um, you know, point somewhere that says, I can do this, and then we'll put it on the plan. A, just kind of a, a picky comment, <laughs> as if the other ones weren't. Uh, on the uh, permit application thing that's in here, on the second page, uh, item number four uh, D. You talk about the kind of the number of units and so forth that are going in. And what you do is you just describe mm -hmm. that there's three unit buildings and or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so what you need to have there is a number, right? right. Twenty three of these and twelve of those or whatever. Yeah, it would would have been. Well, oh, that was an exist. That's but existing. So like we have 21 yeah, the number oh, of okay, units okay. to be developed. 21 and it says four units slash six asking, unit buildings. How many four? Okay. I'm saying is that there gotcha. need to be so X, be more four descriptive. unit buildings, yeah. Y, yep. six unit buildings. Just so it's consistent with the rest. So I count four hydrants in the com entire complex? Uh, I'm trying to remember if that was where I came up with. Okay. Um, That's what I'm seeing here. Um, the furthest one I apart that I can tell is anywhere from 400, 475 feet apart, which is not bad. So I didn't add anything through that stretch of right away. It didn't make sense to do that. I don't know if that's something that they would require where yes. there's no buildings. Like I kind of work backwards from the building, closest building down. Yeah. Um, well, I don't see here. It may be on the other plan is the size of the water line to feed those hydrants. There'd be a six inch. Six inch, mm -hmm. okay. I'll make it done. Yep. I'll make the same comment here that I made the last time is that, you know, there's lots of maps like this cool thing that shows the, the pond, uh, vernal pools and whatnot. If you could just outline a little bit where the where your development is on that map as well, so that we can see you know, a better visual of okay. what has to be moved and mm -hmm. what you're overlaying and stuff. I mean, I think that I think the narrative supports that. It would just be nice to have the visual. Yeah, I think it shows up on the the 300 plan. It may, but um, you know, that's a very small scale. I mean, there's yeah. not there's no other way to show it on one map really, no. other than that. The other thing is, well, the next thing is that uh, in this report by Berman, Berman uh, about different environmental things, um, and they made 
uh, a fair number of findings, that, and well, basically on page nine, they have a whole list of findings and recommendations, and there were some other places in the report as well. Are all those spoken to, or are, have, you know, when they say we would recommend this, is that happening? And do we have the ability to enforce that to happen, or, or what? And that's a question actually to you and staff. So the, the majority of what is on there for, um, for any type of, um, like, vernal pools or mm -hmm. um, hair and nesting, we are, well, not the vernal pools, that, except for that, um, we are significantly far away, far enough away that there is no, there is no need to follow whatever the recommendations, recommendations were because we're beyond that distance. Um, the vernal pool, um, there, there are uh, setbacks, and depending on the type of vernal pool, this is not a significant um, mm -hmm. vernal pool. So. Uh, we can come within a certain distance of it. I tried to keep um, the offset of that. Uh, that stuff will be pretty much um, confirmed, I guess, if you will, um, when the DEP has their opportunity to review the project because we will have some wetland impact and a couple of crossings of the wetlands. So, so when they make their finding, that'll take care of all this. Is that kind of it? Well, so DEP would be the one to check on those um, to make sure they're following in line with the rec recommendations and following the vernal pool rules. But Okay, and that's a binding sort of review what, on their part. What permits did you anticipate having to get from DEP? Um, this is a full site law permit. Oh, so you're going to do SLOTA. It, it oh. has to be. It's over three yeah. acres of That's what I, fig I, I figured as much. So, yeah, that, that's the uh, Cadillac of... If permitting, so okay. it's going to hit everything: stormwater, okay. natural resource protection, everything. So, it cool. Will, yeah. yeah, and they can't start All building until they get that. Good enough. Yeah. So, uh, so, especially like if somebody else is in charge of them. Me too. <laughs> in your stormwater treatment areas, do you have any areas that are going to be um, deep pool, deep deep cutout areas? No. None like that at all. Okay. Um, the only the only reason we would have that is if it would be required for flooding purposes, mm -hmm. and there is there are some uh, I guess exceptions for for discharge of having to control the peak floods if you're in a certain type of watershed. Um, that's a discussion I have to have in more detail with the engineer from DEP. Um, but most of these at, at this point are anticipated to be um, like filter basins, okay. so they, they don't hold any water. And in fact, they're, they're supposed to drain within, I believe, 24 hours. Okay. Actually, they're supposed to drain between 24 and 48 hours. They're supposed to not drain quicker than that. But. I got more. Oh, I figured you did. Okay, <laughs> moving on to traffic, my, my favorite area. Uh, let me see. Um, let's see here. I guess I mean it was. I mean it was basically kind of okay. Um, my question is, you know, you talk about are they seawall? Seawall. Seawall. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. We got it. Yeah, good. Pre-sale pass for Maynard. Um, you know, they do, they do some stuff with level of service and so forth, but I didn't see anything about the level of service of Eastward, Eastward Lane as it intersects with Route 1, specifically the right and left turn out of the development. Okay? So there needs to be some something about that. Okay, what those levels of service are and so forth. Um, the PM probably is not a problem because there's only two left turns out in the PM period. But the 14, you know, and I'm not, I don't think that the level of service on Route 1 is going to be um, compromised at all. But what happens on Sewell, on, I'm sorry, on Sewell, no, on Eastward Lane may well be. Okay. Um, so you need to do that. On the, um, 
the accident analysis of oh, that, where you looked at this. I'm sorry, where's the pages at? The, this stuff? Yeah. Uh, that's back, back brother. You worked with Diane. That's more reading, yeah. The, I, um, I guess the thing here is that, you know, I look at the, the, the crash diagram, who hit who, when, sort of thing, right? And one of the problems is that there's six or so that, that you know, occur right at the intersection and, and, and whatever. Because not all the ones that are shown there really have any bearing on your development. Like in other words, they're in this link, okay? But they're but only the ones that are right here. Because a couple of these are presumably left turns out of uh, finales. Well, you know, that's you can't do anything about that. But anything that goes into or out of resort way is, is kind of like fair game. Problem is that um, there are s at least six that are related right to uh, resort way, okay? Uh, and that's over a two year period, so it's not necessarily a big deal. But the problem is that the traffic on resort way is gonna be significantly increased as a result of this. Okay. Do, do you mean eastward lane? I'm sorry. Okay, eastward, okay. I eastward just wanted lane. to make sure. This. Uh, eastward. It's called yeah. resort here. Yeah. 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 Same difference? Different road. No. 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 Because actually, I think one problem with with that diagram. Where is eastward here? That, no, it's not on there. It's it's on there. What you're looking at is between high street, slip lanes, and short street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the highest crash location. I had 20 crashes with a right. crash of 1.60. This is what probably it, like VIP. What it doesn't take into account, excuse me, doesn't take into account the crashes between Short Street and Meyer Street, which is where Eastwood Lane is. Okay. So I think what we need is another oh, I crash diagram. I see. Another link yeah. between I'm sorry. those two. Right. Yeah. To cover that between Short Street and Myrick Street, which has 12 crashes, which it, yes, which is where East Moore Lane is. And, here these right here. and yeah. this reports for 142 yeah. units. Yeah, that was originally right, exactly. what we had proposed in the saying. sketch plan. Yeah. So what yes, is this I, I, proposal for? Uh, 116. I, 116. So I mean, that's I mean, yeah. we, we lower, but if we just right. Yeah. There, she did. Um, we I did ask her to update a letter um, in the trip generation. It's it's uh, probably in front of that. I'm sorry. What's the question? Or did that letter from Diane? Oh, because this this study was done last year when they were anticipating 142 units, and now they're down to 116. But I think I did see that that was a supplement, right? As well, and it's and it's and, and the, so it's fewer it's trips. Fewer, right? So, yeah. So, so it whatever it was, it's less. Yeah. But back to the crashes. Okay. I don't. I have no idea, as it turns out, what the crashes are at uh, Eastward Lane and Downey's Highway. Okay. And I suspect it's probably something on the order of what we see at Resort Lane. Okay. And the question becomes. What happens when we multiply the traffic on the intersecting road by five, six, eight, ten? Okay, and if we were getting a half a dozen crashes, if it's similar, uh, under current conditions, what happens when we triple or quadruple the outbound and inbound traffic? So, so the point is that 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 the crash stuff needs to be looked at in more detail. And there has to be some sort of, to be sure, a guesstimate about you know what might be based on what's going on here, uh, the crash history going forward, okay? Which may or may not, you know, call for. And I'm not exactly sure what what the result, what the remedy would even be on US one. Um, one would be a traffic signal, which I doubt that they're very happy about. Um, but that would be one that if the, if, the, if the crashes were high, the distance is probably, from the adjacent signals, is probably enough that you could probably slip one in there. I'm sure that the state would not like to do that. But it needs to be brought out is the point, okay? But yeah, the, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I missed the fact that the road is outside the boundaries of, the, uh, of, of what the crash report says. So the crash report basically is... Well, 
Well, is, is DOT going to have a scoping meeting on, on this project? Oh, interestingly, I don't, I don't know how that works with a, with a right of way. That, uh, yeah. I don't think they are, but I'll reach out to them. I have a meeting with them next week for a different project. Well, the other thing. Oops, sorry. I was going to say, all rig stuck their feet in the water for this. Right. Do they have to take into account all rigs, trips, estimated trips, as they consider this? Uh, to be honest, their development isn't really impacted by all rig necessarily, but all rig is definitely impacted by their development, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm not sure who has to take into account whom first, but... There, this development will be sending traffic down east, down east Highway towards Allrig's development, whereas Allrig's traffic is either existing. I, I mean, oh, maybe Ulrich someone's going to leave their house just to go to the, this, this coffee shop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, sorry. Okay. But uh, now, is, is Sebago still takes care of our traffic lights? I believe so. Okay. I mean, is the city going to have Sebago take a look at their traffic figures to see if any updating needs to be made to the, the sequencing? Because well, you have that specific language in, in the ordinance mm -hmm. that covers the synchronized lights. Yes, I mean, that's something Jason does regularly, where if, as more development comes in and more the counts get higher and higher that he can gets a weekly report on, um, he has conversations with them to figure out the best signaling our timing for the signals what i'm getting at though is, is if there's because of this development or all rig or a combination of both mm -hmm. if there's additional cost to the city it's borne by the developers and i guess it's it can be up to jason or somebody to figure out what the increment is it what that six yeah. of one half dozen another are they ten two or yeah. are there impact fees aren't there that yeah. the city has already been yeah. mm -hmm. um, yeah. addressing Primary and diverted ends. Right. Uh, peak hour Saturday. I need to know how many. Because there there are no that. diverted. Yeah. Is what I yeah Diane was telling me. Um, and she did adjust the primary, and it's in that mm -hmm. new oh, letter. Oh I'm sorry. Uh, so they would be included in the Beckwith Hill oh, yes. impact fee mm -hmm. zone. But I think the you know the, the traffic lights in this area. Need to be closely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll, something I'll bring up at the scoping meeting next week and see how DOT wants to proceed with it because I'm not sure that, again, I don't know what they're going to say about that project, the Ulrich project in particular. So if they change their whole plan, mm -hmm. that would have an impact on this also. Oh, they, yeah, it goes back and forth, right? right. Because cause these, all these trips out of, in and out of this development are new. Mm -hmm. Right. Most of the Ulrich trips are Diverted. passerby. I know in, in her, on page five in the safety analysis action review down at the bottom, I kind of like her comment, as a result, access management is recommended as parcels redeveloped along this corridor to minimize curb cuts, increase drive spacing, et cetera, and reduce accident potential. And I think that's a good conversation to have with DOT and your scoping meetings. Uh, sometimes DOT isn't too gung ho on closing curb cuts that are there now. Right. Uh, but I think that's a conversation that needs to be had. You know, between the two developments, if right. something can be done to address you know this area to help out on the safety. Yeah. Is the Eastwood Lane is it officially a loop? I think the right of way that he has is the straight section, but is the rest of that actually a private driveway or is there? I don't know. Because it does loop around. So if. Yeah, that's private too, like the road that comes out by DHS yeah. building. That's a private road also. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who owns that. If the original owner of the bowling alley owned that. But I don't know who actually owns it now. So it's Eastward private all the way the street? After the yes. Eastward 
You still have all kinds of tabs there. I know, I, no. went through, I, I went through them all. No, they did each and every one. Some of them were a little redundant. <laughs> felt about on page four on the turning movement on the level of service. Obviously with cars uh page four. four. Yeah. I mean obviously cars it's actually south on Route One. I mean this says east and west. It kind of runs east and west but it's officially going it's going to the south. south. <laughs> but so northbound southbound traffic on Route One as you know sufficient right turning into it. I just kind of question heading towards Hancock as you're waiting to take a left into the, the eastward lane. I mean, it, it's rated as level A mm -hmm. with very little delay making that left turn mm -hmm. across two lanes of traffic that are well, running in it. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a switch in there that basically talks about whether there could be gaps in the traffic the other way and so forth. And that can that can really help out turns and so forth. In other words, if there's gaps at the that come from a light upstream, you can get you know the the turning vehicles can can make the turn. But they're they're timing here, making left turns in the east or lane, one point three seconds, less than a second. On average. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 no. Well, no, it, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not much. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not surprised because the, the volumes are not all that high. Yeah. You know, and the, and the thing is that they have gone and gone in the, in the quote, right direction. But, you know, so you see southward, southbound, eastward lane, which you would expect to see the most impact, has the most impact. It's just not enough to flick it over into the level service B or wherever. Yeah. I think, the, I think the crashes are probably more important than, than the level of service and the anger incident. That being said, the, that being said, uh, is there still going to be a connection to the other proposal, proposed stuff, or is this going to be it now? I think this is it now. I think you're talking about resort way, the connection yeah. to the resort way. Now I think there's like land in between this property and connecting to that. So, so they won't be connecting through this. In other words, there's no cars that they'd be coming through this and on to eastward oh. from some other development. Right. Okay. Are all these rental units? Yes. Do you have any handicapped apartments? No. Okay. One and two family. That's it. Because of the firewall separation. With the firewall separation. Mm -hmm. Right. We did our research, didn't we? Mm -hmm. This one goes on. This one does rock on as well. This guy here. He's broken. Yeah. It's always the left turn. Yeah. I'm done. I'm disappointed. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure. Well, I think this is quite a, I mean, there's quite a list of stuff here to, to, to deal with, and it, and it all needs to be dealt with um, effectively. And can, can we review, or can you get, like, if, if, the, if the crash thing comes in, uh, you know, if they redo the crash thing, mm -hmm. are we allowed to see that before the final plan is actually submitted, or? Yeah, I mean, I just have to put it in the public What's file. That? I have to just put it in a public file, too. But it's, I mean, you can see it, but it's not technically under review until they turn in their application. Yeah. Well, it might be useful to see it if we possibly can, mm -hmm. or at least one of us. All of you would have to see it. <laughs> Others may not care as much. They still get the chance. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Stan? No, I mean, there's a number of things that um, have to get updated for the plan, you know, like a, for final. Um, I just want to know if 
there could be a little bit of explanation from uh, the applicant on just financial capacity, what the strategy is, and how we're going to look at that the final. I did, we did talk about that. Um, Scott did provide a letter to me from his accountant, mm -hmm. um, and I can email that to you. Um, it's, it's a bit out from the actual construction. They don't anticipate having anything start until next year. Um, so the exact numbers aren't there, and, but you know, he's been working with a number of banks for a number of different projects, so don't foresee any issues. And I think just extending just a little bit what John was touching on before, you know, re all of a sudden there's a there's a bunch of development going in along here, right? And you know, NAMDOT really needs to think about this as opposed to just say, oh, this one's approved, that one's approved, whatever, right. because uh, you know, stuff that happens here now is going to be there for quite some time. So if we're screwing things up somehow, um, we need to act quickly to, or you know, proactive, proactive, prudently, to fix it. prudently, and proactively mm -hmm. to get it squared away. And that, and that's not, and that's more than just one individual development, obviously, right? Because that's one of the real problems with looking at them one by one. Because you say, well, this one has no, no impact. And it's legitimate. And this one has a little impact, and it's legitimate. But you start aggregating them over two or three new developments, and all of a sudden there is an impact. And it was like nobody's fault. Right. But anyway. I mean, is this, I uh, forget the name of the big grant that the city is working with DOT on. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, is this an area, I mean, depending on, you know, we're talking about sidewalks and access, I mean, is that something that that MBRT grant will possibly? Not, not this area specifically. Um, our conversations with DOT, um, this area would probably require its own project separate of the village partnership initiative. Village partner. yeah. uh, that's going to focus more on the village center, which is like the downtown and the residential streets um, that branch off of Main Street, um, not quite High Street or anything that comes off of that. How does this tie in with the state? I mean, the state just did a thing where they invited uh, comments on their long-term highway safety plan. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea about how the other stuff that we're doing dovetails with that, or is that just a completely separate thing? Because my point being that there's a whole bunch of stuff about you know zero crashes and complete streets and all that stuff. And it strikes me that this whole high street corridor and, and down East Highway and so forth is just prime to do something. And, you know, if you don't do, and it's by the same token, if you don't do something now, you're never going to do something because it's, you're going to be locked in. And you may be locked in already. But my, my question was that, you know, is the, is the city interacting with the, with the state relative to that safety plan that they're taking comments on as we speak? Not specifically in that regard. I'm giving comment on that plan, but we're just got talking to them about again, like a separate project for specifically this high street okay. corridor. And that and that could be changing up the right of way and lane reconfiguration and the whole nine yards. Or it, no details yet. It'll be probably getting a study ah, okay. done first and then seeing what the study says. Okay. I mean, as, as both sides. I mean, looked at whether there's any public private relationships that, that the city can help out on this development, whether they be CBD grants or any type of, you know. I'll take volunteers to help with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have an economic development director. I mean, hmm. I mean, sometimes there are public assistance in one regards or another. I mean, obviously that's not our forte, but. No, I mean, it, that sort, those sort of conversations are happening around other developments. So if it was a possibility for this one, I, the conversation would have occurred. I mean, obviously, what the city needs a lot of is affordable housing, um, and I think this is certainly going to be a step in the, in the right direction. Um, but, um, well, it'll be affordable for somebody at least. Yeah. Right. Every everybody's affordable is different. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I will open uh, the public hearing. Is there anybody here to make any comments or questions about this project? Anybody on Zoom, Nate? Nobody with their hand raised. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, close the public hearing. Uh, I guess from my point of view, I mean, I think there's, I, mean, I think there's still a lot of information that needs to be provided. Uh, I'd, I'd be, I'd be hesitant to consider the application, preliminary application complete. Uh, obviously, it's up to the vote of the board. But. And we will note that a lot of the notes on the TRT point out that a lot of the missing things are for final specifically. Um, preliminary is a bit of a lower bar. Yeah. What do you think, Matt? <laughs> I, mean, if, I, I mean, at this point, you don't even know if, if they're going to have access to water and so it seems Well, we know they'll have access. It's a matter of whether or not it's private or public. Yeah, but if it's private and they say no, yeah, we'll go through the road with it. Mm -hmm. We have, we have right of ways so we can get water and sewer. It's whether we hook on to someone else's that's already there or do our own from, 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 from start to finish. True. You know, it will happen one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, and have never been clear in terms of where the line is between having too many things that are left to be decided and you know whether or not they made a start I mean um, you know if, if you say gee we're gonna look at tra I mean and you did a better job than this but you know if we're gonna we're gonna look at traffic and we look we did some traffic counts and you can argue that that's the start right and so is something like that really pretty rudimentary start or recognition is that enough for it to be complete well, at this point for traffic in particular a traffic study completed like this is not required for preliminary so that's more information than oh right no 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 i i yeah uh, but i was just using that as an example right. no i think that this uh, for this point i think this traffic analysis is is fine mm -hmm. certainly fine yeah matt can go through the list um you know that the lighting plans are usually fairly simple I and mean, they take time but they're not complicated just make sure your foot candles match but, but okay so t taking that though but my point is that should we have a at least a rudimentary lighting plan at this point that we can comment upon before it goes to final because it doesn't seem to be anything about that for example um, I don't remember if it was in the uh, so I mean, my, I guess my question is using that again as an example right. how much is how much is enough to make it acceptable at this point. The lighting plan would seem to be totally missing. Mm -hmm. So does that make it incomplete? As well as the firewall. What's that? As well as the firewall plans. As, That's for fire. That detail. Or the high right. challenge, right? Well, so the, the note yeah. on that was, the, so there's two notes for the firewall. The preliminary note is that we need to know if they are using the high challenge firewall or not. And the full engineered design is for final. Okay. Matt, what do you think? I think that most of the information is here that would need be needed to make a decision. I mean, like, again, the lighting plan is missing, but we had a discussion about that, and I thought that, you know, uh, in, turn, in turn of, like, whether it's for public safety or not, lighting is somewhat important, but it's going to have lighting. The point of the lighting plan is for whether or not it's going to bleed onto somebody else's property. Sure. Um, which isn't really about public safety for... What, what about the layout of the property when we really don't have the proper T-turns or turnarounds for fire trucks at the end of driveways? Isn't that part of the prelim, preliminary or is that part of final? It's part of preliminary, but uh, it, it, can be, it can be corrected. It can be corrected, right. Mm -hmm. And come in at final. Mm -hmm. And there is something so there. That, that would, if that's the case, then that would be, have to be part of a motion that that would be part that that would have to be there because if it's not in the final right it isn't going to get voted on well correct and so that's up so. to the developer to make sure that is there my, my two cents is there's enough here that we could find it satisfying 
you know, complete kind of preliminary completeness. I mean, that's the you know, it, it's preliminary yeah. review. <laughs> that's, that's the point. And um, they now had our comments and the staff's comments, and they know what's expected of them. Um, they came, you know, they came with for sketch plan before, which isn't necessary. And um, so, my two cents is um, there's enough here, considering our conversation, that rather than have them come back and do another preliminary plan and then come back for a final. Um, if it's their risk if they don't have everything and they come back here and then we deny it for lack of completeness. And the checklist going forward between here and the next one is implicit in what we, or actually it's explicit, if you follow up on all those things, right? I mean, I don't think that we have to call everything out in the motion. Right. At that point. No, if it's been discussed here and it is a requirement in ordinance, which a lot of what you've discussed is, then it has to be in the final. Yeah, the finals where we would, if we needed to, we would get kind of into the specifics of the conditions. Right. In my opinion. Yeah. I so, so, so if the lighting plan was was crappy. Yeah. Yeah. We could maybe say. You could say we'll, we'll make, maybe we could either say, well, we deny it because you gave us a crappy lighting plan, or. <laughs> That's uh, a technical term. Exactly. <laughs> or we will approve it subject to you improving this crappy lighting plan. Yeah. <laughs> To me, it sounds like you're saying <coughs> is that it's incumbent upon staff to make sure it is totally complete the final before it even comes to this table. Well, I think yes and no. I mean, it's I think staff has done a good job communicating with the applicant what's expected. We've told them they get to submit a final plan. Uh, if there's something glaringly missing, yes, the staff could hold it. But and, and it's their right to submit whatever they want to. Yeah, right? and then and ultimately it's our decision to yeah. say. I mean, you can tell them everything you can tell them, and if they decide that they don't want to answer that, then they do that at their own risk. And as a general comment, you know, the process says, like, I can tell an applicant that their application isn't complete and take it off the agenda, but the timeline between me being able to get the plans and then make that decision before posting the agenda is very short, and I usually don't have the time to thoroughly look at it to make that determination. Uh, but I believe this plan in particular has provided enough information for preliminary. All that being said, I'll make a motion to accept the preliminary plan review of a major use site plan, a major subdivision plan entitled WL Properties LLC. I'm reading the right one, right? Yeah, LLC for applicant owner, WL Properties LLC as a complete as a preliminary submission. Second. Paul, say hello. Okay, thanks a lot. There is a long list here. Though. I, mean, that, I know there's a lot of work, work to do. That's the cautionary note. There's still a lot of work to do. Maybe at the time. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a no vote in the fact that they didn't even know what a high town hey, firewall was. Thank you. Because that actually, like, that's actually what divides You're those. You're the gentlemen. chair, John. You can do whatever you want. Because yeah. so if they can't divide them into one or two family reason. dwellings, then they have to provide ADA apartments. Mm -hmm. Right? Say that again. What's that? If they, can't, if they can't divide those into one and two family dwellings and they become apartments, mm -hmm. then they have to provide a handicapped apartment. Yes, handicap apartments and parking. Yeah. So, so, so those high handicap apartments somewhere in the somewhere in the. Uh, yeah, usually yeah. on the obviously. So that, that the right. high the high challenge firewall is what separates all those units into one and two family dwellings. Okay. So it not only okay. it not right. only right. changes right. the right. demographic right. of the building for for that, but it also helps for fire protection. Sure. Okay. There's a lot to it. I mean, it's not just, yeah, not just a two-hour fire separation line. This guy seems supremely Absolutely. I thought so. Well, maybe these have changes. Let's see if these guys change the names of their streams. I cannot believe <laughs> How many trees have we used on this project? 
supporting yeah, you know, the main paper. Sure. Sure. Cut supporting the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just tosses it in the paper. They're, they're, they're using them for, uh, yeah. Has it always been Arbor property? Keep that one for now. Matt, has it always been Arbor House property? Or is that a new name? It, yes, it has been. Yeah. It has been, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I wasn't even there. Okay. So it's not always been there. I did, but I want to get to the... Okay, are you ready? No. You're the boss. You're the one that's at the door. I'm trying to get to the map. Get to the map you want? I'm trying. Okay, so we'll move on to number five, final plan review of phase one, a major new site plan entitled Old Mill Property Development for applicant Tim Stone and owner of Harbor House Properties, LLC. Proposal is to create a 17 lot major subdivision. Phase one of the project will consist of four dwelling units and the construction of the first section of Old Mill Way and Dave Little Way. The subject property is an approximately 29.9 acre parcel located at 30 Old Mill Road, tax map 41, lot 53, in limited residential, neighborhood, and urban zoning districts. And who's here representing the applicant? Uh, Tim Stone. And, and who do we have on Zoom? Yeah, my name is Zach Graham, uh, civil engineer for this project. Um, it, along with Tracy Daniels, you'll notice her stamp on this. She had a family emergency and isn't able to make it tonight, but I'll cover for her. Just to clarify, so you don't, because you don't see my stamp on the points. I think you're going to want to look. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. Is that yeah. going to lead off? Or Tim? Or What's your stance? Yeah, I can lead off unless you want to, Tim. Uh, go for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, number one, appreciate y'all um, meeting with us. I know you've seen this project a few times. Hopefully, if we have the road names, uh, the, these road names have been approved by the, um, by the uh, uh, appraiser. And so uh, you don't have to worry about any references to uh, Lord of the Rings anymore. So, <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Perfect. That said, just a few a few things on this. Um, we we since we last met with you all, we have met with the DP, and just want to point out that um, the overall project as a whole is not applicable for this for site law because it's both less than three acres in Furbius and um, less than 20 developable acres. Um, we're coming tonight for just phase one because um, as if you'll remember um, previously, there were some potential vernal pools on the property. Those were able to just be reviewed from a timing standpoint in the last couple of weeks. They were determined not to be um, vernal pools. However, we still need, it. well, now that we have that determination, we need to work through a wetlands permit and a stormwater permit with the DEP uh, for phases two through four. We're able to come to you on phase one because we're less than an acre of impervious area, and so we're exempt from the DEP on that one. Uh, now, they will, they will review phase one. They, they've already actually looked at it, but um, it is at risk at this point, but they have looked at it and you know, generally verbally uh, from a stormwater perspective approved that. Um, there are overall some modifications. Well, and let me point out that the sheets on the cover sheet that are um, highlighted, those are left out just because they're part of a future phase, of uh, the future phases. Um, however, in the index sheets, you can see all the phases. Generally, um, you know, substantially what's seen here is what you've seen before. Um, in, in particular with phase one that we're proceeding with, 
Um, the main change there, Daylily is the same and the, the lot layout is the same there. The main change is that uh, due to some ledges on uh, the northeast side of what will be Old Mill Way, um, that routing and, and everything was re, um, I guess once the snow lifted and we figured out the ledges and some of the geotechnical issues, um, we rerouted that roadway in the lot layout. And so lot 15 is now being incorporated into phase one with direct access to Old Mill Way. The um, one thing that we are asking with this um, is, or is that the capacity letters from the Water and Sewer Department came in after the formal submittal. And so we're asking for just a separate vote that those do be included um, with the overall package. Um, and there is sufficient capacity for water and sewer, not just for phase one, but for the whole thing. And then um, uh, the, the other thing we're requesting on the phase one approval for Old Mill Way is really a deferral on the paving. And, and that is with the expectation of future um, development down the way. We don't want to tear up that pavement um, with construction traffic in the future. We'd like to defer paving that section of road until um, after or until the, you know, near the end of construction with that. The, um, and that's, I think, my summary, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Well, let me ask a question about the paving waiver and the way we're proceeding now. Because um, we're here just to do phase one. All right. right. So, and the paving, some of the paving is based on average daily trips. Right. So, if we're not dealing with the rest of the downstream, upstream property, does it technically need a paving waiver because you don't have the trips? Right, it was more just to make sure that the board was aware that they would like to have it deferred until the full ADTs like, uh, were added to that road, which is what was required to be um, paved in the first place. So just putting you on notice that it's a request and that you can grant that request. I don't know if it's technically a waiver, but... Because, I mean, technically, we're just dealing with phase one. Right, well, I mean, so then it would be a waiver still. It's just you're waiving the paving only... For Normally, if it's a private residential road, which the Old Mill Way is, you can waive it for ADT of less than 50, which Phase 1 has. So it is a waiver, but they're not asking for a complete waiver. They're asking for a temporary waiver just to have it waived until the necessary ADT is added to then have to pave it. it makes sense. And that's being proactive. I mean, that's, right. that's the good news, right? Because then they have to pave it twice. Here. But the thing is, I mean, do you really or not pave it need at all. A, the I mean, second waiver because... We're not dealing with phase two, three, and four. Well, so at you, this point. Even if it were just phase one, you would have to grant a waiver because it is a private residential road with less than 50 ADT. All new roads have to be paved, but there are certain conditions that the planning board can grant a waiver, and that would be one of those conditions. But they're not asking for a complete waiver. They're asking for a deferral for the requirements to pave in the future. Is there a time frame? involved in this default. Yes, Zach, do you just want to explain the timeline? I mean, yeah, it's appropriate for us to... Generally, we're requesting... Oh, yeah. I, I think generally we're requesting a a, a, a waiver and it the, really the purpose is for that future development. So we have to come back to you for phase two through four approval. And at, I mean, at that point, if you approve phase two through four, my suggestion would be that that, that would be when a time frame is worked out on the paving of that, because that'll at that point we'll know uh, we'll have our stormwater, our wetlands permit, and we'll know when we're going to be able to build out the remainder of the development. And and really, again, the request has to do more with. It's not that we don't want to pave it, it's we just don't want to tear it up during construction with any construction traffic. And we'd like to come back at, at the end and do that. So, so now, I'll, I'll, what I, oh, I'm sorry, what I would suggest, let's say, because we have phase two, three, and four, let's say, um, you know, I would recommend, hey, 
we're saying we're going to build this out over the summer 20 or phase two through four over for example the summer of 24 and 25 let's say that doesn't happen my recommendation you know put a trigger on it of hey this gets delayed it's going to get you know construction gets delayed for future phases for whatever reason put a you know put some kind of a reasonable time frame on it so the owner has to you know come back and pay it so i mean my i or you could put a measurement on it by the time that there there's enough dwelling units on the property to re or exceed that 50 adt um is when they have to pay but if they're not my presumption is that yeah uh so phase one's complete you'll be renting those out but then will that renting stop while the construction of phase two through four are ongoing uh we haven't completely figured that out i mean it's a lot of noise mm -hmm. especially if we hit a lot of ledge um, so our main concern with the paving is we just want to keep it as far down the road as possible because it's just going to get destroyed one of my thoughts though like there may be a point where you reach that 51 adt yeah. and renting those out but then the construction is still ongoing i think that's a possibility we're renting them out and construction is still ongoing so i think it, because the waiver can only apply for paving if it's less than 50 ADT. So going over that would then trigger the requirement to pave. Uh, why can't we approve the other phases now? Good. Um, because, it, or sorry, you want to go, Zach, or? Yeah, either, yeah, yeah, I can go. We need, we need DEP wetlands permit and stormwater pit permit for the future phases. We couldn't proceed with wetlands permitting until the vernal pool issue was resolved and it was just resolved in the last couple of weeks. And so we wanted to move forward to not miss this construction season for phase one this year. And so we'll be coming back for the future phases sure. after permitting. D does our ordinance require those? My permit? reasoning is different um, <laughs> because there's the rock bridge was uh, Mm, an issue on the site right. visit and there was not um, a determination or engineering of whether or not it could handle fire truck and emergency access going over it um, so any parts of the development that require access via that bridge can't be built out or approved until we have more information on that so that's the reasoning it's not actually the no they for the state um, permits they just have to have applied for them for final yeah that's what I thought yeah. that would only be phase four though I was gonna say isn't the rock bridge yeah, the rock bridge is phase four. Well, and the rock bridge is not really a bridge, right? It, as I remember, it was a pile of, a pile of rocks. A pile of rocks. An yeah. abutment, whatever you want to call them. They're just abutment. They're just rock abutments at this point, and we need an evaluation for this structural. We still have to work through that design. So M Matt's absolutely correct. That's part of it. And but frankly, with the vernal pool stuff in a couple of weeks, it, it, we couldn't have gotten a permit together with just the unknowns of the design changes uh, between now and, and wanting to make this meeting. Did, so you haven't submitted that vernal, that permit application yet? No, we have not. Okay. So that's the, okay. Uh, one other question I had, and I, and I can't find that letter, but there was a letter to Lori about a waiver dealing with, I believe, the stormwater exiting the property into the river does that sound mm -hmm. like it to me? yeah it was yeah what what we asked for was it was a waiver and and actually we talked to the dep about this as well so what it is is a waiver to not have to detain storm water because of the proximity to the river um it, and so it, it essentially and that's and the dep promotes this when you're at the bottom of a base and there's no sense to detain it so really the stormwater plan is for all the water quality treatment, but no stormwater detention. Uh, um, I guess the point I was getting at was, was it was addressed to Lori, uh, but in reading the, the ordinance, the, the administrator is the one who makes the decision. And in this case, the administrator would be the planning board, if, I'm, if I understand the ordinance correctly. Yeah, take it. Yes, yeah, so that would be just a, I mean, a suggested condition to, if you do, do move forward with approval, is to have the letter edited to be addressed to the planning board. Because actually the, the letter for Lori, 
on the paving waiver is says old mill property development exception to Ellsworth flooding standard request. So I think somebody has got the heading on the flooding standard flood request on the paving waiver letter. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're just Maybe making not. confusion yeah, with it. Throughout TRT, the city just recently adopted new floodplain ordinance standards, and there was a discussion about that. So I think there may have just been confusion as to who is in charge of that waiver uh, request because Lori oversees the floodplain ordinance, um, but the waiver would still come from the planning board. Great. So I just want to make sure you're... We would need that waiver for phase one. Would you need that waiver for phase one? Yes, we okay. would. Yes, I think so. Okay. So, so is um, you have is one proposed tree house in phase one? That's correct, yes, on lot fifteen. Okay. Oh, well, one thing I was gonna ask. <laughs> Sorry about that, right? <laughs> uh, in the past you mentioned I mean, we talked about short term rentals, but in kind of the revision you talk about short-term rentals, maybe up to 30 days, but maybe more in winter seasons. Uh, I don't believe we said that, more than 30 days. I don't remember that. Uh, but these are dwelling units, complete like dwelling units, so. Our, our intention is not to make them long-term in any way. I mean, from the city standpoint, I mean, there's no differences for how long they rent them. Yeah. Well, these are all, it's coming as a single family home subdivision, so. Yeah. yeah. We, but the city doesn't regulate short term rentals. No. Yet. Yeah, I see <laughs> basically it looks like one underground fire protection water supply cistern. Am I looking at that correct? Phase one? Uh, what, phase yes, one? one for phase one. That's one correct. for phase one, correct. So each each phase has one ten thousand gallon system here. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, I'm only seeing one in there. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, the one on sheet. Um, sorry. I got. Let me get to that. C zero three eleven. Okay. You can see the detail for that ten thousand gallon cistern. Okay. Just yeah. Where you can see where it's located, and then the details located on sheet C four hundred three. Now, yeah. now, are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool. Sure? <laughs> Am I sure about what? Let me go now. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm sure okay, go ahead. Check yourself out. Uh, I, just a comment on the traffic stop, of course. Uh, thank you so much for doing it, first of all. I, I, I appreciate that. The city, even though they may not know it, appreciates that too. Um, just a couple of comments, and these are really for the record to the city as much as they are, well, not for the city as opposed to you guys, actually. And that is that, uh, you know, this. First of all, well, this part is for you as well. First of all, the, the marginal impact of this development on the operation of uh, North Street Shore in US or 1A is really minimal. Uh, that's, so, so you've proven that, okay? And I'm not terribly surprised, okay? That doesn't necessarily mean that intersection is still in good shape. And indeed, the analysis that they did really showed that, okay? And I would just add, um, well, first of all, on page eight of the traffic analysis, uh, it says no intersection deficiency can be considered correctable as apparent. 
And my question is, what were you considering to be an intersection deficiency? Because, you know, if it's just in the design of the intersection, like, you know, this lane goes here or whatever, I would tend to agree, okay? If you're talking about uh, potential signalization as a intersection deficiency correction, then, then a signal, in fact, would make a huge difference, okay? And I would go one further in terms of their accident analysis, and again, thank you for doing that. Um, there were, in the study, assuming I got the right intersection this time, uh, but it seems pretty clear that this is the right one. Um, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten accidents, okay? Um, and some of those are really not so much, uh, you know, function of the intersection, really, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them, okay, that are correctable with the traffic signal, okay? So the point being that if you had a traffic signal with there in functioning, those accidents, uh, maybe some else accidents would occur, but those accidents would not have occurred because they were all, you know, some sort of inter intersection of cars on this road versus that road. And you separate those movements and, the, and those are correctable accidents. The other thing is that the MDOT typically says, oh, wow, there'll be, there'll be cra new crashes at the end of the queues for a traffic signal, okay? And that's absolutely correct. I mean, there, there, there could be. Okay, and those would only be on 1A though. They wouldn't be really on the other two because 1A, uh, the, the side streets are already stopped controlled. So, but the, the neat thing about this particular site is that downstream, i.e. at Forest Avenue, you basically have a very similar situation. You know, it's the first traffic signal after a long stretch of, with no traffic signals, okay? So you have Forest, and all you're doing is moving that particular thing upstream a little bit uh, from forest to to north slash shore okay so in terms of trying to predict how many rear end collisions there may well be if you put in a new traffic signal forest provides a reasonable model for that okay not the model in the end necessarily because it's a different you know it's, some stuff is different but it clearly provides a model for how many rear end crashes there'll be and one of the things that MDOT has said is that the propensity for rear end crashes outweighs somehow or another uh, fixing these other crashes, okay? And so if the forest, at the end of the Forest Avenue queues, there's been 53 accidents, then well, okay, then they got it right. And if there's two accidents, well, maybe they didn't get it so right. So, so my point is that this provides a lot of information, a lot of support, I think, for, um, for a traffic signal at that particular intersection, which will help your development. But again, the, the impact that your development, either now or in the future with the with complete build out, pretty marginal. So like that's what I have to say for the record. <laughs> that's almost like I thought about that beforehand, isn't it? We were all, we were all students sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the professor. <laughs> As long as he doesn't give a test. <laughs> you good? I took notes, actually. Good. Pass those along. Any other questions? I'm done. No, I got. I. I. No, I thought the thing was pretty, pretty complete, and you know, other people have their pet things to take care of. I'm good to go. Any questions, Molly? I think so. Staff. Um, no okay. questions, but one comment. Okay. Um, city staff and developers love to meet to discuss the future of the public portion of Old Mill Way. Um, but for phase one, the ADT doesn't make a difference. So um, that conversation will happen prior to any future phases coming to mind. So do we have to grant a waiver um, before you do the actual passage of the, of the thing here, the approval of the thing? I think you can add the waiver to your vote. Um, or you just put it all condition. on one mm -hmm. with a condition that's built right in. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to say that. <laughs> For example, the city and the developer are still working that. on <coughs> combining forces on right. so the public the portion of the road. Yes. So prior to future phases coming to plan, we'll have had this discussion um, and hopefully a resolution for you. And I certainly do applaud the developer for yeah. engaging in the conversation with, with the city. 
I appreciate it. Uh, and I just for the record, I liked the Lord of the Ring names. Yes. Just for the record. Apparently. It's hard to spell. Yeah, apparently 911 didn't like them. I appreciate it. You know, it would be funny saying it, though. It would be, exactly. Well, I, I'll, I'll just continue what I said to the last group. I think heavy metal bands should be the models, but just me. <laughs> <laughs> that failing people dead side. Public hearing, good. please. Public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I know we got a couple of people in the back that are concerned about this. Any comments or questions? I got a question. We can come up okay. to Please state your name for the record, please. Bruce Kaminsky, I'm the closest to Butter on Old Mill Road. You guys all know that by now. Um, just uh, the vocabulary here. You were talking about pavement. What does pavement mean? You were talking about the pavement for phase one and the rest of the project, and on my mind, pavement says asphalt. Am I wrong in making that connection? Or, or has there been a change here? No, it uh, will be asphalt. So, so this project will eventually have asphalt paving throughout? For a section of the road, yes. Not throughout, but for a section of the road. Okay, let's get closer to it. Am I going to have pavement in front of my house? That'll go to the comment I made that for phase one, no, but for any future phasing, the developer and city will have met and made a decision on how that part of the road will likely be paved. But how it happens is the discussion that still has to happen. So through phase one, we're I'm still having gravel in front of the house? Yes. We get to phase two, and if they proceed past one and into two, it's going to be asphalt. Very likely. Very likely. Oh, this is okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you all went right. to law um, school. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and from uh, your lips to God's ears, uh, you know, a traffic light? I mean, I, you, you said it here, but is it going to bubble up or is it just die in here? Uh, you guys are both my K grade. <laughs> can you answer that question? I, you know, it's, it's kind of, I mean, if you want to comment, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's come up a number of times, okay? And, and MDOT is kind of apparently loath to put a traffic light in them on their own. Uh, I think they've said, told the city that they could do it at the, on, on their dime if they want to. Um, it's quite a dime. Quite a dime. Oh, quite yeah. a dime. I mean, this, several this, dimes. Yeah, several dimes. I mean, this is a very expensive <laughs> thing because the railroad tracks really you know, muck it up and all that. Right now, so that is a very good summary. Thank you. Um, so right now, I think on North Street, DOT is putting in some type of blinking light to alert people to the upcoming intersection, hoping that it'll slow people down, they'll be more cautious as they approach. Um, but in terms of an actual signalized uh, intersection, DOT has been, again, loath to help with that in any sort of way, so it would be completely on the city's uh, expense, and it's around a, a million dollar improvement. So the city is also not sure if it will be happening soon. But things like DOTs are sometimes sensitive to citizens' complaints and issues. Just saying. I understand this has been ongoing. I've only lived in Ellsworth for two and a half years. I understand this has been going on for a whole lot longer. And, I'm, and I know that citizens' complaints, uh, I had a contractor that lives up on North Street. He came by and he says, we've been fighting this for years. So. Uh, uh, I think DOT hasn't heard it, and I doubt that they're going to now. Oh, yeah, so. oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. Oh, one last question. Uh, sewer and water was mentioned. Sewer and water will continue to be part of phase one, so they can proceed with sewer and water? Yes. Okay. So, good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll here. Ask Nate if there's uh, anyone on Zoom. Internet, Zoom. Yeah. Nate, is there anybody on Zoom? I'm checking right now. Nope, no questions. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, on the water, I was going to ask. No. Oh, certainly. Come on. Yep. Sorry about that. My name is Margaret Drag. I've been here about six weeks. I live with Bruce. Um, and I don't have my hearing aids in, so I didn't hear everything very well. <laughs> but it sounded like in front of our house, it's still going to be gravel, correct, for at least phase one. Can we count on the city still coming out as construction and that gets messed up 
coming out to take care of that. They were out, I think, about they, they last week. week. But they didn't put any gravel down. They just used the kind of plows to even it out. But knowing what is going to be going on next door, that's not going to be too small a thing to keep asking the city to do. No, you're correct. I mean, that's something that I think staff will keep uh, the highway department apprised of. And, I mean, it, and if it turns out, you know, the road is taking a beating, you know, feel free to call the city hall. Because obviously the gravel would help too, rather than just having the. So I got a question: If the road gets beat up because of the construction traffic, are you folks willing to take care of that road that you tore up? In terms of like adding gravel, or in terms adding of gravel, smoothing re it out? repairing potholes, because I know right now I'm in the middle of a construction project where I work, and that road is taking a beating, and it takes a beating in the spring, and it takes a beating in the fall with trucks, dump trucks, going back and forth. Is that something that you folks are willing to take care of? Um, I think certainly in terms of potholes and any of that kind of problem, absolutely. Okay. But I would also encourage, if you notice issues, to call City Falls Public Works Department. We'll be watching. Yeah. There Thank you, you go. I think it would encourage the city to get to the paving soon. Tell that. Look, man, I'm working on it. <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, but so uh, I think I saw that the water line that is going to be a four-inch line. I know there was some discussion in the past. I wasn't quite sure what the size of the water line was, but I think I read that it's going to be four-inch now. Yes, it's been increased. Yes, four-inch. Yeah. Okay. Did we close the public hearing? Well, I did, and then kind of opened up so one <laughs> closed. It was a semi-close. <laughs> I have a question. Sorry. As this project evolves and they have to come back for the other phases, as a butters, will they be notified? Yes. Great. So every phase you'll be notified. Just so you guys know. And I think you want to come back sooner than later because I, because I, there must be a time frame that if they don't come back in a certain amount of time, they would have to start all over. No. no. I mean, if they get the final approval for phase one, and as long as they complete that within the. Um, I believe it's 36 months yeah. time frame, then that's fine. And then they come back for two, three, and four. They have 36 months to complete that once it comes to the work. Or do substantial completion, I should say. It doesn't have to be fully complete. So, uh, somebody makes a motion. We have to deal with a paving waiver and stormwater. But anything requires a waiver, you have to make. <laughs> yeah, and again, I, uh, I think. The paving waiver should also include like that extra time frame where, or however the board thinks is best to measure it, whether it's the ADT, where it goes past that 50 ADT, where the waiver would no longer be applicable, it has to be paved, um, which if they come with two, three, and four all at once is easy, but if they don't, phase two is really the phase, I believe, uh, that triggers it. Do you remember if it was part of phase two? I don't. Uh, do, you know, do you know how, I don't know if they still do it, but department heads used to write the motions for the council. Uh, we did do they that. still do that? We did. Hint. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Especially when we're dealing with waivers. <laughs> Listen, to be fair, you guys surprised me a lot, so I'm not sure I could predict some of these things. <laughs> Let me just say that I, I think that it should be a time thing as opposed mm -hmm. to an ADT thing, oh, okay. because it depends on how you start counting, but if you start having instruction equipment go back and forth, that is ADT, and that's going to jack right up when you when you do the construction. So I, I would be leery of tying it to the ADT. No way. So a time frame, and if for whatever reason they're not completed uh, through phase four uh, by that time frame, they either have to pave or come back and ask you guys for an extension. Yeah, something like that. I mean, you can you can make it fancy and say. You know, not you know, not counting construction equipment or something like that, but that seems. Well, how is ADT calculated? It's just it's on the, it's not by construction equipment. It's calculated by. It's, it's calculated by the final yeah whatever cars on a road. the final product is going to be. Yeah. So. Well, when we're calculating ADT for, I mean, you're right. In the instance of construction, there's its own ADT, but right. when we're looking at the ADT for the development. It's based off of how many single-family homes are. If uh, yeah. if you make that clear, sure, okay. 
just that other thing. Mm -hmm. We could yeah. also do it the, the earlier of exceeding 50 ADT or two years or two years. Whichever is sooner. Whichever is sooner. Right. Should we do the waiver separate from the motion to accept? You said you can make it a condition. You can make it a condition, condition of, of approval. approval. You can make it a condition of approval. Exactly. All right. So I move we uh, accept final site plan review of phase one of the major use site plan entitled Old Mill Property Development for applicant Tim Stone and owner Arbor House Properties LLC, subject to the condition. Uh, or, or subject to the granting of a waiver uh, regarding pave, paving um, of the, what section of the road are we talking uh, about? Old Mill Way. Of Old Mill Way. Um, uh, prior to, or an, up and until uh, 5080T is exceeded or um, two years expires, whichever is. We want to say two years. Is two from years this a good time for y'all. Date. Uh, it's hard to tell at this point. Can, can I suggest three years since we have the thirty-six months for construction? Yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, yeah, that would match. That would match the required. Yeah. yeah, let's do that for three years, whichever is sooner. Okay. And then we also need. Do you want the, the um, a waiver for the stormwater? And no, a yes. waiver for, for the reten or for the retention of the stormwater. Retention of the stormwater. Yeah. I think it's all in there. Good Second. <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Sorry. Thank you, gentlemen. Go for it. We want to see that tree house. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> a few things to do first. Yeah. Good luck. But before we get done, should we keep this for us? <laughs> phase two, three, and four, or, or do you want it all back? I will keep you phase one. Back. You should keep the studies that apply to all phases. I gotta take it. You don't have to keep the plans unless you want to. But I'll have copies of these plans for phase one. Uh, so if you want to see them again, I always have digital copies for you. <laughs> Sorry. Staff Thanks all for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just housekeeping first. Um, there are uh, appointments for Pentland Board that are expiring at the end of June. I just want to check to make sure those who are expiring are still interested in serving. John, your term expires. Um, and just want to know, would you like to be appointed for a second or for another term uh, to expire 6-30-2028? <laughs> sure. And then I'll Mike, big, the newest member, but your spot, your the seat you've taken, uh, expires on 6-30-2023. And as an alternate, you have a two-year term. Uh, would you like to re-up for a term to expire 6-30-2025? Yes. I would? Yes, you would. Is that what, I, what you said? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have no choice on that. I don't? No. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Thank you. And then retire. <laughs> Um, I guess comp plan update um, for you all. Uh, so June 16th is our kickoff expo in the Franklin Street Parklet from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you are available, feel free to swing by and we'll have information on all of the chapters and subcommittees that will be forming um, for the comp plan moving forward. You can sign up for them uh, or just simply learn more information about each of the chapters. Um, and you can provide public feedback as well. We're gonna be asking people like for each specific uh, chapter area, what's one thing they'd like to have change over the city in the next 10 years? And every piece of public engagement you turn in, uh, you get a raffle ticket to win prizes, so there's some incentive for you. Um, and then, uh, once they were nearing the end of the uh, inventory analysis phase, but the city has provided the information to the consultant, they're now compiling it to create their document, their deliverable. Um, for that phase. And then we have the consultants visiting June 15th and 16th, which is why we're having the expo on the 16th, because um, they'll be in town. And we've um, set up 
but we meet with city staff for the most part, but then there are also additional focus groups um, for community groups. Um, I could not fit all community members and all like, categories of focus groups in the two days that they had along with me with city staff. So they will be returning in July and I will be scheduling the remainder uh, for that visit, uh, which will include a public committee um, focus group. So I'll likely have a member, maybe John or whoever is available at the time um, from the planning board to join that public committee focus group. Unless you know you're on the steering committee, you might want to give somebody else a shot to uh, talk to the consultant. Mm. But we can sort that out. <laughs> you gonna let us know what we need to do for the 16th? Yes, like I'll be sending be there? out. Well, I'll be sending out an email. Okay. Uh, probably Thursday or Friday this week about. Okay. Yeah. The 16th. I'll be out of town. I probably won't be here. I'll be back in July. So Ireland. Ireland. Yep. That's awesome. Leaving won't be back until July. No. Well, oh. I'll be back in. I'll be back. In June. That's all I have. Wreck the struggle, real? What's that? Is this That's all I have. <laughs> it is a struggle. There are motions over. Make motion. Silver. Oh, second. Oh, yeah, I do have a mylar for you guys. It's not in favor. Thank you. What's next month looking like? Because I'm waiting. Next month.